completely different stuff. This time, at the fortress, there's a musical festival. Well, when I say musical festival, I probably should say a music festival, international music festival. Now, the music itself won't start until after seven, okay? So hopefully, um, uh, we won't run into any um, tribal sound. I'm going to take you over there. That's the fortress, Aaron Breitstein, and we're going to travel by cable car. Now, those cars take 35 people at a time. That's how our German friends prefer to do it. If I can, I'll split the group up, you know? Who needs to feel like a piece of tin fish? Humid and, you know, no one can sit and whisper. I know you know the mighty Rhine. Where, where have you sailed from, by the way? Basel. Basel. Okay, so you know the Rhine. And here we go. We go to Clip Herja and... Oh, no! There's your captain having another martini! <laughs> well, that's okay, because you don't sail until 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so you do go out on the town, be back at the ship by 2.45, please. Okay. Now, when you follow my direction there, you see I'm making this dramatic yeah. gesture, you'll get the second most interesting landmark in the area. It's called the Deutsches Eck, or the German Corner. So called because that's where you get the confluence, or Koblenz, of two waters. The Rhine, which you're on at the moment, and the Moselle, which is on the far left, originates in France, comes all the way down here to meet the Rhine. Now, what else is um, So, uh, that chap on the horse, you're probably wondering who he is. That's Kaiser Wilhelm de Grossa. Kaiser, not Koenig. Koenig is king. Kaiser. Emperor. Yes, he worked very hard with a chap called Bismarck to unify all those principalities, kingdoms, and free states into one big country that we now know as... Germany, 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 and then I'll put my hand up for the ladies. It's just there for stability. Don't worry if you're rejected, I'm getting used to it. So please allow me the pleasure and privilege to act as your guide and point out a few things. Having lived here for several years now, I may with all due modesty claim to be a connoisseur of the fortresses. Good heavens, where are my manners? <laughs> allow me to introduce myself. My name is John Humbly Humphrey. Hey! Thank you, thank you. And I am literally your humble servant. Now, I may be dressed like a civilian today, but just like your good selves, I am a delegate of the English crown. All right, I know most of you are delegates of your American president, and I'm here to inspect the works. However, my interest is not so fleeting. You see, I am a lieutenant colonel of His Majesty's Corps of Royal Engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. On a mission of the utmost importance. And as readers of the political pamphlet, you'll be well aware that in this year of our Lord, 1836, the danger of war emanating from France is as acute as ever. And those poor chairmans, they don't even have a channel between themselves and their gruesome neighbour. Well, is it any wonder they're so keen to fortify, fortify, fortify? Or as they say here in the local dialect, Befestigung, Befestigung, Befestigung. Try it. Befestigung. 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 I say, that's very good. There's going to be an extra ration of schnapps here and here for sure. Well done, you two. Keep it up. That's brilliant. Remember that since the peace of 1816, we're all friends here in Europe, aren't we? Yes, yeah. we just have to keep an eye on yeah, one another, not. that's all. <laughs> so, the pathways that we've been walking along indicate ballistic curves. And underneath your very feet, tunnels are branching out everywhere. Now, when the construction's finished, yes, there's a very intricate tunnel system underneath our feet right now, trust me. Now, when the construction's finished, we're going to plant bushes, brushwood, something like this over here, but it'll be a lot denser, nastier. We'll throw in a few other varieties so that it mutates. And we'll plant it for a square mile. Now, behind you there, you've got um, those windows, but actually, they're not windows at all. They are, in fact, cannon embrasures from which the entire field is covered in cannon fire. And when I say the entire field, I mean the length of the cover for a square mile. We've got 80 cannon inside. Four of them are so large, they have to be dragged around by horse, and they've got an incredible range, up to a mile. Wow. So consider this, friends. We've got a square mile of scrub, and we have a square mile of cannon fire. But you're probably wondering, why all the concentration this way? 
Yes? What about coming along the, the water? What if the French attack on the water? Well, they have attempted it. It's absolutely futile. From this height, folks, it's just like lobbing cannonballs over the hill. So what the French do, they march this way, they take a detour to Falander, cross the water and come back to take the fortress. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Felt Tour. All right, you German speakers, what does it mean, felt tour? Any takers? Take the cannons out any time we want to and replace them with long rifles. So, the hope is, if the enemy does get past that gate, the bodies are now piling up against this wall, a pulping mass of coagulant gore. Did you like that? Oh, yeah. Look, look, I can't claim it to be my own. It's from Hamlet again, but it's a lovely line. Taking the war damage, folks, taking the war damage. Hard to miss, isn't it? Up there. And let's just pause here. Just pause here, just to make sure that people have got room to get around us, I suppose. You see the war damage up there? I'll give you about them who've been a bit naughty. Look, to be honest with you, it's lit up. Doesn't look so bad, does it? Uh, you weren't expecting such a large open space behind those dwarfish looking outer walls. Am I right? Right. right. When, I, when I first showed you the fortress, you weren't expecting it to open up like this. Trust me, folks, it will continue to do so like a labyrinth or a maze. Taking all the embrasures, we've got embrasures up here. We've got genuine rifles along there. You see all of those holes for riflemen? Yeah. Yes. And this is a covered passageway. From up here, infantrymen can run along and basically run back and fire down upon the enemy. Yeah, did I scare you, my dear lady? Good, I was trying to. <laughs> That's in order to better withstand bombardment. So the building's like that, yeah? Strong. Taking all the archers in the walls. You've got archers behind you, archers over there. You've got archers here. You've actually got archers on top of archers. Now, not as was so charmingly suggested covered in doorways, purpose-built archers. The archers you'll remember from physics, technical drawing, architecture, etc., is the strongest structure, emulating the triangle. The foundation stone's on the other side. It was laid 20 years ago on the 19th of July, 1817. Mind you, a lot's happened since then, folks. And take the Ravelin. There are no blind spots. There are no hidden angles. You can literally attack the enemy from every side. We're singing. Okay. Yes? Are you ready? Bravo! Here we go, folks, and it's rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Three, come on, never, never, never shall be. Here, if somebody is coming, yeah, especially when they take a pause, you can hear if somebody is coming and practice the controlled detonation of hostile mines that are already in place. This tunnel system is quite far reaching. We were, in fact, walking on it on our way here. And when you disembark from your cable car, believe it or not, you were on top of one of the old mine systems then. But here's the big question, folks. What would happen if the enemy did get this far? Yes, that's the, the, the question that Aston must always ask himself as the commanding officer. Are you ready to find out? Yes. yes. Well, well, I know we'll be tempted to sit here and have a beer with these wonderful people, but you'll be able to do that later. Let's go into the hinterland. <laughs> Wonderful. The entire fortress cannot be taken in one piece, but only section by section. And by Jove, those froggies will find it a hard nut to crack. <laughs> now, my estimation is that 1,500 men and 80 cannon will defend this place splendidly. Even now, in peacetime, a thousand men are stationed here. Please don't ask me what they're doing, folks. Drinking schnapps, twirling their moustaches. Hiding from the music, I don't know. <laughs> Only when that central building, the Ravalan, and both counter guards have fallen, is there a chance of taking the fortress? And that, my dear friends, is the most unlikely scenario I have ever come across in my professional career. I mean, you might as well, if I don't know, Haley's Comet to appear. <laughs> and the British to run out of tea on the same day. <laughs> as my old friend over here from the Secret Service would say, it ain't gonna happen. Hold your ground, hold your ground! That's it, that's it, that's it. He can be quite polite, you know. Sometimes we have to hold our ground, folks, yes? Remember, we have to take this fortress by the end of it. Because up here we'd be under much closer quarter if the enemy does get up here in terms of the fire. 
and these bricks crumble rather than splintering so that fewer of their own men are injured by shrapnel. Ah. They've probably even considered the crossfire potential of the very spot we're standing in. And if they haven't, the pigeons which usually inhabit here certainly have, yes? Now, you've got up to 70 rifles from the Katine aiming at us. You have to trust me, because you can only see 40 of them at the moment. Please observe this. You'll see that the angles are all different depending on the intended shooting range. I mean, would you want some relative of that raggedy ass Napoleon to be your king? Nine. <laughs> Do you want to see a guillotine in Piccadilly? A guillotine in Washington Square? Do you want your children to grow up singing the Marseille? No. They've left this here today out of the kindness of their hearts because they heard you were coming. So Shaki Baby and I, we fall into the water. Are you a good swimmer, Monsieur? Absolutely. I have a feeling you're going to survive. I really, I'm a goner, but give him a round of applause. He's a Yay. fighter. Well done, Shaki. You're brilliant. Thank you. You can see the inspiration and the influence all around you. I guess General Astor's in there. The fortress is called Aaron Brightstein, translates as Honourable Brightstone. Can you hear that? Aaron Brightstein. Mm -hmm. It cannot be taken in our day and age. And when it's finished, I'm going to help Schnitzler raise the Prussian flag, which will fly here ere long. Question is for you, folks. Will that flag be here forever? No. no. All right, let's get under the cover. We're there. So yes, Humphrey was a British spy. He went back, uh, he went home, he wrote a book, he gave away all the secrets. But with or without his espionage, this place had many changes and many different occupants. After the, well, there it is there, there's the Prussian flag, okay? Didn't fly as long as they had hoped. After the Great War, folks, 1914 to 18, the US forces, Stars and Stripes, went up in this very courtyard and flew from 1918 until 1923 as the US troops were garrisoned here under General Allen. But little, would Humphrey have expected to have heard orders shouted en Francaise as Jacques and his pals carried out drills here from 1923 until 1929. There you are there, Jacques baby. Uh -huh. ah, ah. Leaving the fortress, cigarette in mouth, you look fantastic. Ah, c'est la vie! Ah. <laughs> from 1929 to 33, the flag of a German democracy made an all too brief appearance. That's the Weimar Republic. Had terrible problems with inflation, etc. And then, as of 1933, a very different banner was mounted, which was to have more devastating consequences for this place and the rest of the world than anything before or after, as you well know. Yeah? But you're probably wondering, where's the swastika? We're not allowed to show it. It's okay. verboten, uh, forbidden, illegal. Yes? You can get permission to, to show it for the purposes of filming, television, for, for major theatrical events, but you have to get permission. If you were just to draw it onto that wall, for example, there's a small prison term and it gets, you know, it increases. The only time you'll see it is in a kind of a teaching context, mostly about the horrors of the past, it's especially the Holocaust. Um, but this is actually the brown banner, which was the beginning of the movement, the brown shirt in Munich, before Hitler came along and redesigned the swastika as the Nazi emblem, yes? But if you require further evidence, there they are, just around the corner from when we're, where we're standing, involved in the Hitler Grusser. That's the regime there. Mm -hmm. And just to put this into some perspective for you, look at this. There's the Deutsche Zeck. There's the statue of Kaiser Wilhelm. And there's a pleasure cruiser. Oh. Thankfully, not the Viking ship. <laughs> yes. now, 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 I say that not really to be funny, but, but, but just to point out that the Nazis used to love coming up here to have photographs in their dress uniforms before the war. During the war, they didn't really use the fortress. What they did do is hide artwork in the tunnels. Okay, remember, there's an extensive tunnel system here. If anyone's seen the film Monuments, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, a similar thing was happening here, hiding artwork in the tunnels. Now, the Americans got on top of this. So, 1944, 45, the Americans are back. Lovely little detail, they brought the exact same flag with them. They weren't cost-cutting. It was a nod to this garrison and to General Allen. Why? He had saved the fortress. The French wanted to destroy it. They said it's a sign of Prussian imperialism. He said, no, it has significant historical value. Now, the Americans were arguing that they should use this place for military administration because they'd gotten intelligence that it wasn't really being used apart from storage. Um, purposes. The French who'd been here with them before agreed. The American bombers flew over, dropped one bomb by accident on their way to 
bomb uh, Koblenz? Well, we say by accident, we don't really know. The, remember that area where there's the, the war damage and I asked you to store that in the grey cells? That's where the bomb hit. Oh. If you go back, you'll see that's been all rebuilt, that, that tunnel, it's very shabby. And the, the locals very darkly call this place a one-hit wonder. <laughs> now, the, the, the debate rages, why just the one bomb? Some say it was a mistake, and others say no, it was a demonstration of force. They were just showing if they wanted to, they could have wiped out the fortress. End of the year, it went back to the French. This is the French zone. France is very close. If you went to school during this time, you'd learn German and French. And then, as of 1947, it went back to present-day German administration. First, um, uh, West Germany and then United Germany. But if we just go back to the other picture, something interesting, I think, worth noting, um, is uh, this is a, a photo of, of, the, um, of the area, obviously, and we're all standing currently under this arch. So it just gives you some perspective. Uh, you know, the history is not that far ago. So just out there, we'd see the American flag. But under present-day German administration, the place is put to constant new use, folks. We've got a youth hostel around the corner, restaurant over here, various museums. There's a brilliant one upstairs, by the way. Into this door, up. Captain. Well, it's, oh, Lieutenant Captain. Well, yes, uh, I, I've got um, a website. It's daviddaviesactor.com. I've also got a Facebook page for my play. It's Hyde, H-Y-D-E, uh, minus sign, one man play. All written out, O-N-E-M-A-N-P-L-A-Y but daviddaviesactor.com. You'll find my email address and it would be wonderful if you could send me the clip. That would be great. Thank you.